and hello friends, Potato is with you, and this is the second part of the guide on the Fashion Crete, on version 121. But before you start watching, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like it, write a comment, click on the bell, and also follow the link in the description. Subscribe to Telegram and Discord, there will be all the news. But we're getting started. The next important item that we will consider with you will be a wrench. It is made of three gold bars, a stick, and also a gear. Let's take it and consider it one of the main tools in this fashion. I will also take such a linear frame and a mechanical piston just to show what you will need this device for. Let's say, look, I'll put a linear frame. Well, let's do one thing. And with the help of this wrench, first of all, I can break it very quickly. Just shift and PCM. It all broke and was added to my inventory. Also, with the help of this wrench, I will be able to turn it. That is, look like this. And from above, I poke at it with a PCM and it just turns. I poke here, it turns as if on such a plane. Here, it turns vertically. Just as you could see, when I take a wrench in my hands, then this number lights up here. When I remove it, this number is not there. This number means the number of blocks that this block will interact with. In general, this is not so important now. The main thing is that with the help of a wrench, I can change. That is, I can't change it in any way without it. Let's see. Let's say it's all on the example of such a piston. I can turn it like this, then turn it like this, as in general, I want to break it. The next important auxiliary device is engineering glasses. We have already used them with you, as I have already shown you. They allow us to see the permissible load and also how much energy is generated here at the current speed. In general, they allow you to see the parameters of our blocks that are already in the world. Further, what can partially replace these glasses is that we have such a tachometer and also a stress meter. The tachometer is made of a compass and also an indesite case. The stress meter is simply by readjusting the tachometer. Let's take them, also take a load in the form of a press and put it all in a chain because these blocks are connected, as you can see, to the shaft. We connect the tachometer first and, as the name implies, the rotation speed will be shown here. Now, as you can see, we have four revolutions per minute and this arrow here indicates absolutely small indicators, about four revolutions per minute. Here, it will be 256. If anything, this device does not carry any resistance or load to your network, so everything is fine. Next, let's put a stress meter here as well. It also does not carry any load. And here it already shows how much capacity we have left, well, more precisely, the energy safety margin, roughly speaking, in our network and also the load. Now we have a low load, we connect the press here, and now you can see the remaining capacity of 480. If we accelerated this wheel by gears now, then we would have even less capacity because we would have more energy involved here. That's all low load. Let's connect a lot more. So it's still low and 288 are already left. Now it's a moderate load and so it will be until the stopper. Here, everything has stalled and now here you can see such a terrible effect. It's all off the scale. The speed has dropped to zero and what to do do. Next, let's look at such an auxiliary block. I honestly don't know where to use it if not in maps. This is a rotating table. It is made of a wooden semi-block and also a shaft. We take it, we take some kind of power supply. Let's say creative engines. We put creative engines like this and a rotating table on top. In general, it's just a table that rotates on which you can throw objects that we do not interact with it in any way. And if you put some living creature here, then it will rotate here like this, and it will have a lot of fun. We can also make the maximum speed here, and that's how we will rotate very quickly. Yes, it's very scary. Let's break it faster. Next, consider a very useful device. This is a mechanical mixer. It is made of a gear, an andesite body, and also a whisk. The Corolla is made of five iron sheets and two indesite alloys. We take this case, also for its operation, you will always need a bowl and to show how to power it from the wheel in general. Let's take gears. Look, if we put this here and this here now, this is the whole thing because it is put exactly in this way. That is, this mechanical mixer is placed in the block above the bowl. Nothing is powered because, first of all, it is powered by gears. Let's do it now. I'm going to translate another plane now in this way. Here, everything is fine. We have moved to another plane. Now we put the bowl here in the block. Let's say this and look. It turns, but it is written. It looks like this component is running at insufficient speed. How to be, and in general how to solve it. Look, we take a small one, we connect it to the big gear. It turns twice as fast as this big one. Let's do it again like this. And now it seems like everything should work at this speed. No, we need a speed even higher. 
so we accelerate even more. Here's a big gear here, here's a small one, everything will soon be exactly enough, nay, but let's take it a little bit here to put it properly. And that's it. 128 revolutions per minute are required for this device. That is, we can even check right now how much we have here. Here, we have 8 revolutions. Here we have 16, and here we have 32. Yes, by the way, a small mistake. There are not 128 revolutions per minute, but 128 watts, roughly speaking, consumes energy. Now everything works fine for us. Let's break it down and put a bowl right here. What can I do here? You can actually do a lot here, but you will need to improve this device even more. Well, now we can still do quite a lot of crafting, but not as useful. Let's say we can take andesite with you, a piece of zinc, Let's also give a bucket along with wheat flour. If something wheat flour is made with us simply by cutting wheat, let's go to our mixer now and throw one andesite and one piece of zinc here. We're starting to mix this whole thing up and see what happens in the end. You and I get one andesite alloy, when before it was obtained from two andesite, from two pieces, one andesite alloy. Now twice as much consider that. Also, Let's say you can pour water here and throw wheat here. Let's see what we get. The whole thing is ground, mixed, and we get the dough with you. You can melt this dough and make yourself one bread. In other words, we had one wheat, we made one flour, and made a whole bread. Next, to improve this entire scheme, you will need an empty flare burner. She makes out of cancer and also for iron sheets. We'll take it with you. I will also take the egg of the summoning of the flash, because without it you will not be able to do anything. After all, in order for this thing to become generally useful, you need to put a whole flash in it, well, or an ifrit, as you want to call it. Let's do it with you. That is, we imagine that we went to hell with you, found a frit, we just poked the PCM holding this cage, and that's it. Now we have a flare burner. We put this thing right under the boiler. Look here. And we have a small fry that is not lit, so that it lights up. And starts heating this boiler somehow. We just need to poke it here with either coal or wood. In short, somehow power it like a stove. Everything now. He starts to heat this boiler. You see here the light goes on. It all starts working for us in short. Let's say now, we can do the most important thing. Just what we did this whisk for. It's brass. Brass is obtained by mixing copper and also zinc. Everyone threw one thing at a time, and now we're looking at what happens. And it turns out that we have as many as two brass ingots. This brass just opens the way for us to an advanced crate. We will be able to make a lot of devices, but in fact, this is not the limit of the possibility of this and frit. It can be heated up even more, but poking it always with coal, it will not be possible to achieve this. You will need to make a special cake for a flash. In order to make it, we will need to study pipes, how to transfer liquids and the like. Let's do this. So, in order to store liquids, we have a liquid tank. In order to transfer them, we have as much as a whole, look, mechanical pump, liquid pipe, liquid valve, and also a smart liquid pipe. The liquid tank is made of a barrel, also of two copper sheets. A mechanical pump is made of a liquid pipe and also a gear. The liquid pipe is made of a copper ingot and also two copper sheets. The liquid valve is made of a liquid pipe and also an iron sheet. For its operation, we will also need a copper valve handle. It is made of andesite alloy and three copper sheets. And the smart liquid pipe is made of electric lamp, liquid pipe, and also brass sheet. The first one is a storage, a liquid tank. You can put it just in the world, and it will store as many as eight buckets. Let's fill it up now. Check it out. Everything is perfectly filled in, very beautiful. You can also improve it. You can either go up, or you can see how to do it. So hop, Look, they put it up, made it two by two. There will already be as many as 32 buckets here. Put four more blocks here, even more, and so you can do it more and more. In order to pump out some liquids from it, we will need a pump, which, accordingly, will pump out the whole thing. But it needs to be powered with a gear. You can see, here we have an arrow. We can change this arrow with a wrench. That is, where the water will swing just the same. If it is now standing to the left of this tank, then it means that the water will be pumped out, and so it will be pumped in. Let's power up this whole thing. Everything is spinning perfectly. And look, right now, we are pumping this liquid into our world. That is, it will be filled in now. Here, hop, we have everything filled up. This can be used, for example, in traps. Okay, of course, pumping is all very cool, but we can, let's say, pump the whole thing here. That is, so a little bit, a little bit, 
a few miles of buckets are pumped into the tank. Well, we can also extend all this with the help of conventional pipes. Our pipes have the following modes. We switch them with a wrench, and they become transparent, which is very beautiful. We can also put a container here, and everything will be pumped out perfectly. We also have such a liquid valve, which we put here in this way, and now look at it in the red position. These two arrows are here. This means that it is closed. To open it, we need to apply any kinetic energy here. Let's say we have a copper valve handle. Here is such a very beautiful one. We weave PCM, and we have our valve opening a little bit like that. The shift plus PCM is closing. We can also choose it, so to speak, so that it is allowed by degree, so that it opens and closes a little bit by a little bit. And the last pipe that we have here is a smart liquid pipe. Let's put it here. Let's say this pipe with a filter. It will not pass everything that is not this filter. Then there is emptiness now. It will miss everything. And if we put a bucket of water here, let's say. So, we open our valve and look, nothing is flowing. If we change it here to lava, then the lava flows again. It is also a very important point. If let's say you have such water here, you will bring it all here like this. Let's do it beautifully like this. Here we will put a pump here, power it up, and look what happens here. We have lava, and here is water, and there is a cobblestone. The pipe breaks because lava is incompatible with water. It's worth considering. Also for our pipes, there are special brackets like this, wooden and also metal. The wooden one is made of three sticks, two boards, and also an andesite alloy. The metal one consists of three pieces of iron, two iron ingots, and also an andesite alloy. These staples are needed just to make it beautiful, so it's like our pipes are attached to the floor, to the wall. This is what metal looks like. Metal, of course, is much better. Here is such a decorative element. Then, we finally move on to the crafting of our flash cake itself. In order to make it, we will need the following mechanism. This is a dispenser. The dispenser is made of a copper case and also dried kelp. To make a copper case, you take copper, trimmed wood, and poke at the cam, as with an indesite case. We take a dispenser, a depot, because it also works in pairs only with a depot, a liquid tank, a pipe, a motor, which is all this business, to power up lava, because we will enrich this cake base with lava. The very base of the cake is made by pressing in a boiler, using eggs, sugar, and also unzrakal flour. Unzrak, flour is obtained by crushing in such a special crusher, which we will consider today unzrak. So we put our depot on top, we put a dispenser on top, it is automatically placed at the desired height, and we need to put lava in it, but if we poke like that, then nothing will work. It's like he has a cavity, but he doesn't cram anything in. In order to cram lava into it, we will need to bring lava using a pipe from Sterner. We'll put a pump on. It will pump out perfectly. We pour lava into this tank. Now we power the pump. Now the lava is pumped here, and our dispenser is filled with lava. Now, how does it even work? You just put what you need to enrich here at the depot under it. Let's say, in our case, this is the basis of the flash cake. Just poke, and that's how he spits out lava, and you and I get a new item. This is a flash cake, also in this dispenser. Let's say it can be enriched with water, and let's do it now. Let's take ordinary land, put a whole stack here, and look what happens. Our land turns into grass. It's pretty convenient. You can use it somewhere on the sky blocks. There are also a lot of other crafts, enrichment there with all sorts of chocolate, which we will also consider later. Here with water, lava, and so on. Then finally, our burner flashed, and the cake flashed. Let's take our cake and poke just a flash in the cage. Look what happens. It becomes so blue. That is, superheated. It directly heats up this boiler very much. And literally everything will melt here, even a cobblestone. And look what's going on. We throw a boulder here, and our boulder turns into lava. One cobblestone turns out to be 50 millibytes of lava, which is actually quite good. True, you can make endless lava on stalagmites, but it's not so interesting. Next, let's look at such an auxiliary item as sandpaper. It is made of paper and also sand, you can use red. We will also need rose quartz. It is made of nether quartz and eight stone dust particles. We take this whole thing, and with the help of this sandpaper, we will literally be able to polish quartz and make polished quartz. How is this done? You take quartz or sandpaper in the second hand. Let's say you take quartz or sandpaper in the first hand, so that you have hands in general with different objects and clamp them for kilometers. You start grinding and get polished rose quartz. You don't need this sandpaper for anything else. 
but this polished rose quartz gives you the opportunity to create lamps with which you can make very smart devices. By the way, when we made a brass ingot, the greatest brass case has now become available to us. This is the same as an ordinary andesite case, that is, you can put gears in the case there, let's say it's very beautiful like this, you can also place shafts. In general, it's the same as before. And finally, we got to the great mechanical assembler. It is made of an electronic lamp, a brass case, and also a workbench. The electronic lamp is made of polished rose quartz and also iron sheet. Look, in order to make the maximum structure that you will need, a mechanical collector. You will need as many as 21 pieces of such collectors. It will be powered by a gear and, accordingly, rotational energy. What is it? This is, roughly speaking, a workbench. A copy of it, which is mechanical, will do all the crafting itself, into which you can feed items using, let's say, even ordinary conveyors. They will be distributed there, and what you need will be crafted. But also in this mechanical collector, there are some unique crafts that you will need in this mod, but they are made only on it. In general, look, the maximum structure of this collector is done as follows. Three things here, then you make a 9x9 nine nine square on top like this. Here you also set up 1, 2, 3. On this side, 1, 2, 3, and on top of 1, 2, 3. This is the maximum structure that you will need in this mod. Then, it will also need to be configured. Look, the point is that you see these paths between them that connect. They all lead to one point, let's say somewhere here. That is here we will have an exit. Now all these paths will need to be set up so that they lead to this end point. That is, look, here we have everything coming together here. And here, look, it goes down. That is, we do it up here. And here it doesn't go there. It doesn't go anywhere. So we do it to the right, and that's it. That is, here we have objects that will roll here, then here, here, and in the A end, everything will shift here. Here they will be spat out, that is, the final crafting. There are also stubs for this mechanical assembler, because if you don't make stubs in smaller crafts, that is, let's say somewhere you just need to use these two blocks, and the others will not be closed with stubs, then the craft will not be determined. That is, let's say let's try to make an ordinary workbench. I'll lay it out, well, let's say here, here they laid it out, that is the crafting of the workbench, and I close all these other cells with the help of stubs. Now, how do I even start crafting? You feed energy here, with the help of a gear, that's how we look carefully, what a beauty has gone. They begin to combine. The blocks are combined, they go along these mini conveyors, I don't know. So great, everything has arrived here, as it were, and now it will be connected here. Everything is going to the end point, and crafting will be done now. And very beautiful. In this way, these four blocks are connected, turn into a workbench, which pop, dropped out, also so that nothing falls out, you can just take the chest and put it here. Everything will add up to this chest. But why did we make such a large structure? If we literally need but a maximum of nine blocks, probably, but in fact it is not. Let's see where this can be applied. You will need this to create the biggest crafting, namely crushing wheels. They are made, as you can see, on mechanical assembly, 16 andesite alloys, four trees, and also one of any stone. First of all, we remove the plugs with the help of a shift plus a PCM, lay out the craft. In the center is a stone. Here on the sides is wood, and here are andesite alloys. If you have some kind of crafting that's not like that, then you just haven't started it yet. When we finish it now, hop, look, it starts, and everything starts connecting. It doesn't matter how it connects. The main thing is that everything eventually leads to one point. That's where it will connect. And here it is now. Hop, everything transforms into two wheels that turn into a chest. Here they are. What is a crushing wheel? First of all, in order to do it at all, in general, somehow work with them, and you will need two crushing wheels, and this is a fat replacement. To power up, you will need naturally kinetic energy. I will also take the blocks that we will crush here. And how to install these wheels? They are installed vertically. Let me take now, let's say, well, brass cases, just for beauty. I'll put a column here, and a column here. I'll leave the crushing wheels on them like this. Here they have, look, this is the shaft, which is also there at the back. Well, it's better to power them from behind, probably, because it will be somehow ugly in front, right? We connect the shaft here, and look, it turns inward, it's good. This one turns inwards, it's bad. In other words, we are now just taking with you, 
and changing the direction with the help of a reversible mechanism. Now they are all spinning like this, and some mob can literally be sucked in here. Let's check it out. Let's say we all have a favorite creeper. That's it. He got here, and his house was crushed. Here's the gunpowder dropped out. But in fact, it is needed not in order to kill, but in order to recycle resources in general. Let's say, if we throw our iron here now, it will be crushed, it is sucked in, the reprocessing begins, and crushed or iron falls out to us. And we can then wash it all out, get another redstone besides. But if we throw here not or iron, but iron ore, let's see what happens. We get experience, we get a chance. In my opinion, 75% of the second crushed or iron, that is, we literally double almost a piece of experience, also, with a chance of 75%, and also a 12% chance a boulder can fall out. In other words, consider that we are literally doubling iron ore right now, which we can then wash, get another redstone besides. What kind of piece of experience? You can poke the PCM through the air with it, and you will just get some amount of experience. You can poke right with a stack, and you will get a lot of experience. You can also make an experience block like this. It is made of nine pieces of experience, and you can't poke it through the air, you can't do anything, just build it with it. And it looks beautiful, so with an effect. Also in this wheel, you will be able to crush now such as Akram, Azarine, Viridium, Cremsite, and get with a 20% chance. Or gold from Akram, 30% chance, or zinc from Azarine, 80% chance, or copper from Viridia, and also 40% chance, or iron from Cremsite, and with the same chance you can get in pieces. In other words, now these four decorative blocks, which I called like that, and you scolded me a little bit in the comments for it, are really becoming useful. Next, let's look at this desiccant of objects. It is made of a copper body and also iron rods. We take it and what is it? This is such a thing that is put in the world and from above. You can, let's say, with the help of a conveyor, or just throw yourself a bucket of water, let's say. It starts to empty out like this, it pours out, then it is transmitted. Let's say you have such an envelope here. Passes a bucket of water here, then it spits out. An empty bucket is already there, and water remains here. From below, you can connect a pipe and pump out water from here. Let's say the same thing can be done with milk, so that milk overflows here, or lava. And also let's look at the weight catapult. It is made of gold leaf, depot, and also gears. Look, this catapult, we will move the shotgun, or even mobs or people where you need, but to the limit. Look, in general, you poke the shifter plus the PCM on the block where you will need to deliver an object or something, maybe someone, and now you can move away in all four directions. Let's say somewhere here, and put this catapult somewhere here. But there is a limit, that is, we move away, we move away, we move away, we move away, and here you already see it all disappears. That is, here is the maximum length. Well, let's put it here, why not? That is, right now this catapult will be catapulting the whole thing to that block over there. What should I do to eject? To do this, we will need to power up the energy here like this, that is, the more kinetic energy, the faster everything will recharge for us. Here, we will do 256, that's it, it's loaded. Now we can just give into it like that, Hopa, and we are about to fly here to our circle, that is where we ordered it. The catapult champion gave us an achievement. We can also throw an object here, and it clearly flies right here, where we wanted it to go. Well, there was a potato with you, be sure to subscribe, like, write comments, Click on the bell 